Todd, with Rodon's uh, history with all these injuries, would that prevent you or scare you off from making a long-term commitment to him? It, it might scare me off a little bit, but I think this guy's going to get long-term. He's the best pitcher that's still on the open market right now. I think his last season and the ability for him to be durable has shown that maybe at least past the Tommy John, um, you know, kind of recovery time. And let's face it, I mean, he was a guy that even uh, in his what we would call prime prior to last season was a guy getting, you know, by with 93, 94. And last year, that velocity, it sure seemed like his arm was healthy because he was up 97, 98, power fastball, power slider, was very durable. And so with that guy and what he's got the capabilities of doing, you know you're going to have to commit to him long term. So, yes, it would concern me just like a long term deal to Jacob deGrom would concern me because of his recent uh, injury history. But I think it's what has to happen to get him on your staff. Yeah, it'd be scary, no doubt about it, because of that injury history you're talking about. But I think it, some teams more than others, if you're, ta if you're bringing him in to be your number one guy, you don't have a number one, then, then and it's a really a big gamble because he, he would mean so much to you. But I think the Yankees can afford to take the gamble because they already have uh, Cole there. They have Cortez. They have a solid rotation. He's the kind of guy that takes them to another level. So I think in that sense, the Yankees can take the gamble, and they, and they probably need to take the gamble if they're trying to win. It's all about winning champions. Explain why, Harb. I'm in agreement with you. I think Rodon would take that Yankees rotation and the team as a whole to another level, and it's hard to look at them and say, well, where can they really get better? That's one area where I think they could. Why do you think Rodon would take that step? He's really level? a number one, at least he was last year. You know, he pitched like a number one. He led the league in uh, strikeouts per nine, uh, 12 strikeouts per nine, and he's just got that stuff. He can throw at the top of the zone and blow guys away when he's right. So uh, you put him in that rotation. Really, now you have two number ones with Cole. And the, the way Cortez pitched, he's almost a third when he's really good or the third number one. So they have the potential to dominate a series, a short series in the postseason with pitching kind of the way the Astros did this, this October. Yankee fans love Cortez, and I think they take it to heart when you say that Rodon's a legitimate number two behind Garrett Cole. But it's the reality. I mean, Rodon went healthy is a dominant pitcher. That's a great one-two punch if they can make that happen with him and Cole. Let's make the call to the bullpen and welcome in Terry Collins. Terry, I know you're a big fan of Rodon. Would you be at all concerned about signing him long-term with his injury history? Uh, well, I, again, I think what Todd said is right. But I think, you know, again, I think if you get a guy, you know, when you say long-term, I wouldn't sign any pitcher to a seven-year deal. None. You know, I think, you know, you look at a pitcher three or four years, especially a power arm like that, who's had some history, you know, and you, and you overpay him for four years. But, you know, you still get you still get a real, real good pitcher, but you're not tied to him where if something pops up, you don't have him for three years. 